Okay, 9.4, we're gonna talk about solving polynomial equations in factored form. So we talked about in the previous section like multiplying polynomials, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the polynomials down into their component parts. Kind of like, remember when you did like a prime factorization tree uh, with numbers, we said like 42 is seven times six, and then six is two times three, and then we would say, well, two times three times seven, that's the prime factorization. These are the factors. If you multiply them together, you get back the original 42. So these are equivalent. It's just that one is broken down into its components. So similarly, we're gonna be doing that with polynomials. But first we wanna talk about some properties, the zero product property. So uh, product means times, right? And uh, zero just means that you know this product is equal to zero. So when you have a product multiplied to zero like this, either x has to be zero or y has to be zero, or both of them have to be zero, right? Because see, like if x was zero, zero times anything is zero, right? If y is zero, zero times this x value would be zero, or if they're both zero, zero times zero is zero, right? So it makes sense, right? So let's look at an example. Say we have this group multiplied by this group. So you have you know two uh, factors multiplied together, but they equal zero. That means that x plus two has to equal zero, or x minus three has to equal zero. So if I subtract two from both sides, that means x equals negative two, or if I, over here, if I add three to both sides, that means that x has to equal positive three. And you can check your work, you know, if you put it back in, negative two plus two is zero, zero times, in this case would be negative five, would be zero. Or here, if you put three in, that's gonna be five. Three minus three is zero, but zero times five is zero. So your answers are gonna be negative two or three. And just a little note about terminology, I've often been mentioning synonyms throughout this course. Synonyms means, you know, there's there's the same, they're similar, right, uh, terms for the same thing. So when you talk about solving like this, you could call these solutions. They're oftentimes referred to as roots, answers, or in this case, zeros, because you see how this is equal to zero, so three would make this equal to zero, so we call it a zero, okay? Do you understand? So these are basically synonyms. So you wanna memorize those, solutions, roots, answers, and zeros. Now, GCF. GCF is just an abbreviation for greatest common factor, and it's kinda of like what we're gonna be doing is the distributive property in reverse. So before we, how we multiplied into the parentheses, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this process backwards, and I'll show you how this works. So say we have two x plus 12 y. What can we divide out of this group and this group? What's the largest, the greatest common factor we can divide out? Well, it looks like they're both divisible by two, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide these by two, so that's gonna cancel, give us x, that's gonna reduce and give us six y, but then what happens to that two? We're gonna put it in front. So the idea is if we were to distribute, we get two x, plus 12y, we get back the original expression. It's just that now it's factored because it's two times this group. Just like we had over here, two times three times seven, it's the components multiplied together, give us back the original, right? So it's factored or broken down. Let's try this one here. What can we divide out of this group and this group? What do they have in common? What's the greatest common factor? Well, let's see, it looks like you could divide both of these by five, right? This one has one X, this one has two X's, right? So we could divide out one X, they have one in common. Now if we reduce this, you can see the fives would cancel. Two minus one just gives us one X. Over here, 20 divided by five, that's gonna give us, let's see, four, and the X's are gonna cancel. But what happens to that five X that we divided out? It goes in front. And the idea is if you distribute, five X times X gives you back the five X squared. 5x times negative four gives you back the negative 20x, and you've got it. Now, if this was an equation, meaning if this was equal to zero, then we would set 5x equal to zero and x minus four equal to zero and solve using that zero product property. So let's jump into some examples so you can see how this works. So let's take like this one here, e plus two times e minus three equals zero. So you can see these are multiplied together because they're right next to one another. It's equal to zero, so using our zero product property, we're gonna set each factor, meaning each group, equal to zero, okay? Then all we have to do is subtract to get the e by itself. Over here, we have to add three to both sides to get e by itself. So you can see our answers are negative two or three, or we could say those are our roots. Want to learn Algebra One? Check out my Learn Algebra One video course for sale where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra One. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn Algebra One. 
click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. Or three, or we could say those are our roots, or those are our zeros, or those are our solutions. So try this one here, number two. You've got 2f plus 5 times 3f minus 6 equals 0. What does f equal? Well, again, all you have to do is set each factor equal to 0, right? Then you just solve that little mini equation, that little miniature equation, right? Divide both sides by 2, divide both sides by 2. That's one answer. Here I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Remember, with equations, you're always doing the opposite operation. So you're working from the outside in, doing the opposite. Instead of subtracting 6, I'm adding 6 to both sides. Instead of multiplying by 3, I'm dividing by 3. So just a refresher if you, uh, about solving equations. Now, it's number 3, 4, and 5, it says factor. So again, remember factoring is like breaking it down into its component parts. So here, when you look at this, you say, hmm, what can I divide out of both of these terms? What do they have in common? Well, it looks like I could divide out of 7. This one has three c's, this one has two c's. It looks like they have at least two in common. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by seven c squared. So the sevens are gonna cancel. Three minus two is one c. Over here, 21 divided by seven gives you three, and the c squareds cancel. But what happens to the seven c squared? It doesn't go away. It uh, just goes in front. So if we were to distribute, we're gonna get back the original expression. Does that make sense? So you're dividing it out, but it's really like factoring it out. Okay, so it's like doing the distributive property backwards. So try number four. What do you think for this one? 8d squared minus 20d. What can we divide out of both of those terms? Hmm, let's see. It looks like four. And as far as the variables go, it looks, looks like they have at least one d in common. So if I divide, that's two. Two minus one gives you d. Over here, that comes out to five. The d's cancel. We're factoring out 4d. I'm just going to put that in front. And again, I can check by distributing, and I'm going to get back the original. Okay, now this one's interesting. This is actually a trinomial. See, three terms. The terms are separated by minus or, or plus, right? In this case, they're both subtracted. So three terms. And we also we have two variables, x and y. But it's the same process. So try this one. What do you think? What can you divide out of all these groups? Well, it looks like they all can be divisible by 3. So I'm just going to put a 3 here. Uh, let's see. They all have at least one x, okay? And it looks like this one has one y, three y's, two y's. So it looks like y is the most that we can divide out of each term. So you want to you want to look at whatever is the most in common, which is actually the one that occurs the least. Okay. So what you want to do now is we factored out the three x y, and let's see what we're left with. So that actually cancels, and anything divided by itself is going to be one. Here, nine divided by three comes out to three. Two minus one gives you one x. Three minus one y gives you y squared. And over here, 6 divided by 3 is 2. The x is cancel, and 2 minus 1y uh, is y. And again, if you're not sure if you did it right, go ahead and distribute and make sure you get back the original. Okay, now switching gears, we're going to factor, but we're going to take it one step further. We're actually going to solve. So see how this is equal to 0? These ones, it just said factor. These ones, it said solve. So you have to kind of read the instructions and see what it's asking for. Uh, but in this case, we have to both factor and solve. So let's do the factoring first. What can we divide out of both of these groups? Looks like a 3 and also 1d. So if we do that, what do we get? We get uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 minus 1 gives you d. Uh, over here, 3d divided by 3d is 1. And then we factored out the 3d. So I'm just going to put that in front. And it's equal to 0. So now what we do is we make two separate equations. 3d equals 0 and 2d minus 1 equals 0. So if we divide both sides by 3, 0 divided by 3 is just 0, so that's one of our answers. Here if we add 1 to both sides to get rid of that negative 1, and then divide both sides by 2, so that's going to come out to d equals 1 half or 0. Okay, let's try number 7. Well, you try this one on your own. So what do you think? What can you divide out of both these groups? We have to factor it first. Then once it's factored, we can set each factor to equal to 0. Hmm, let's see. It looks like they're both divisible by 2, and it looks like they have at least 1x in common. So if we factor out the 2x, we're going to be left with 1x, because the 2's cancel, and 2 minus 1 gives you 1x. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and the x's cancel. Okay, now we just have to set each group equal to 0. That's a zero product property. So 2x equals 0, x minus 6 equals 0, divide both sides by 2, and over here add 6 to both sides, and you can see you're getting 0 or 6. Now remember, in math, or actually means union. It means both. These are both the answers. It's not like one or the other. We say the word or, but in math that means union, those two combined together. 
Last one over here, number eight, and then I'm gonna erase the board. We're gonna do a couple of word problems to practice those. Notice this one, it's equal to 15y. We wanna set it equal to zero, that's the key. So we have to actually subtract the 15y from both sides so that we can set this equation equal to zero. Now we factor out the greatest common factor. Now as you get better at this, you know, you do this a bunch of times, you can skip some steps, you know. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, in my mind, I'm dividing this by 5y, and I can see there's only gonna be a 1y left. If I divide this by 5y, I can see this is gonna be minus three. But, you know, in the beginning, I would do kind of like I'm doing here, just show all the steps so you don't make little mistakes. Then if you set this group to zero, 5y equals zero, divide both sides by five, I can see that y equals zero and I can set y minus three equal to zero, add three to both sides, and I can see that y equals three. So I kind of did that in my head, but you'll notice after doing this a bunch of times that you can skip you know, a couple steps. But in the beginning, I would show the work. So let me erase this whiteboard real quick. We're gonna do some word problems, and I'll be right back at you. Okay, let's do a couple word problems together, because again, word problems are really important in algebra, but first let's talk about this other formula you wanna to add to your formula sheet. Uh, that's the vertical motion model. And so just like it sounds, you know, vertical means you know, up and down, um, and this is a model to represent basically the height as a function of the time. So say for example, you throw something up into the air, this formula will give you the height depending on how many seconds have passed, okay? And V is the initial velocity, that's the starting velocity, that's the velocity that you throw it up at. And uh, S is the initial height. So like if you are on top of a building and you're 100 feet off the ground and you throw it up in the air, your initial height would be 100. If you're on the ground, your initial height's gonna be uh, zero. Well, actually, if you threw it from here, you know, it'd be like maybe five feet above the ground, right? And uh, that's the idea. Now this formula is set up in such a way that this is in terms of uh, like feet. So this is like uh, uh, feet per second, that kind of thing. So let's do some uh, examples so you can see. So you kick a ball from the ground into the air with an initial velocity of 20 feet per second. How long until the ball hits the ground? Okay, so let's go ahead and write down our equation. And I recommend this, whenever you're doing a problem and it involves a formula, I like to write down that formula and then substitute what I know right below uh, the particular variable that I'm substituting in for. So we're trying to find the when the ball hits the ground. So what's the height of the ball when it hits the ground? zero because see it's, it's gonna be zero feet above the ground. So this is zero. Now you're kicking it from the ground, so the initial height is zero. So I'm just gonna say that's zero. We don't have to write zero, zero is nothing. And then let's see, we've got negative 16 t squared. The initial velocity was 20 feet per second, so that's plus 20 t plus zero, which is just nothing. So to solve this equation, what we wanna do is just like we were doing before, is we wanna factor and set the factors to zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the greatest common factor, I'm gonna factor out negative 4t and divide this by negative 4t. That's the greatest common factor. So let's see, that comes out to uh, 4t minus five. Okay, so now all we have to do is set each group equal to zero. Negative 4t equals zero and 4t minus five equals zero. Add five to both sides, divide both sides by four, and you can see that's gonna be five fourths of a second. Or if you divide by negative four, in this equation, you're gonna get zero. Well, after zero seconds, the ball was already on the ground, so that makes sense. So it's after five-fourths, like one and one-fourth of a second, that the ball comes back down and hits the ground. Okay, let's do another example. See if you can do this one on your own. You drop a penny from a bridge, whoops, this is supposed to be a bridge here, that is 144 feet above the water. How long until it hits the water? So kind of imagine, you're up on this bridge, you drop this penny, and it falls and it hits the water. So again, let's use our, <clears throat> excuse me, our vertical motion model, right? <clears throat> okay, so we wanna know what the height is when it hits the water. Well, what's the height above the ground when it hits the water? Zero, right? Okay, negative 16 T squared. The initial velocity, when you drop the penny, how fast, how fast is it going? Zero, because you're just, it's not even moving, you're just dropping it, so that's gonna be zero times t, of course zero times anything is zero, and then the s is the initial height, so how high above the ground is it when you drop the penny? That's what they told us over here, 144 feet. Okay, so you can see what we have here, we have negative 16 t squared plus 144. All we have to do is factor it and set the factors to zero. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna notice that both of these are divisible by negative 16, Okay, so that comes out to negative 16. This is t squared minus nine. Now remember from before when we were talking about the, uh, well actually we haven't gotten to this yet. <laughs> so let me, let me kind of mention this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set each group equal to zero. Now the negative 16 
you can't set that to zero because that's just a constant. So we don't worry about that. This one, we had negative four t, see the variable there? We can set this term equal to zero. Constant, we can't set to zero, but we can set t squared minus nine equal to zero, add nine to both sides, take the square root of both sides, and what's the square root of nine? It's three. So after three seconds, uh, this penny is gonna hit the water. So great job with the word problems. Keep on going. I'll see you in the next section and uh, we'll continue on with chapter nine.